my channel is all about data analytics, specifically Power BI, so it makes perfect sense for me to analyze my YouTube analytics in Power BI. So join me as I create the semantic model for my channel's YouTube analytics. This video is part one and hint hint, in a future video, part two, I'll create this beautiful dashboard based off from this semantic model. So subscribe now so you don't miss out on that video. So let's get this semantic model started. So the first step is to export our YouTube data. So in YouTube Studio, I'll go to Analyze Data and then over to the Advanced Mode. I'll select the Content tab as I'd like to analyze the data under the Content tab. And then I'll go over to the Date Period. I'll select 2024 so that will get me all the data in 2024. And finally, I'll go over to export current view and select comma separated value, and that will export the data to a CSV file. Now extract the files into a folder of your choice, and we're done for step one. So now the next step is to connect to our data sources in Power BI Desktop. So in Power BI Desktop, I'll go over to transform data, and I'll connect to our CSV files. I'll select this first file click OK and I'll do the same for the second file and load that in. And because I'll be applying the star schema model later on, I've already identified the fact table, the dimension tables, the grain of data, and the indicators or the measures to create. So I'll go on now and create the necessary tables for that. So now we'll create some groups to organize our queries in. So now I'll apply some filters. Take note that only the data showing in the data query after the query has been filtered will be loaded into the main Power BI report. So now we'll create our fact tables using reference from the context menu. So take note, this action creates a new query that references the original query. Uh, the new query inherits all the steps and transformations of the original query, but remains independent. So you can apply additional transformations without affecting the original query. So that completes our fact tables. Now we'll continue to our dimension tables. So we've just got two dimension tables to create, uh, the date dimension and the video dimension. So now I'm creating the date dimension using M code. I'll put the link below to this M code. So check it out. So now we'll create the video dimension also using reference as we did for the fact tables. So now we'll extend the video dimension by adding two new columns. Firstly, the video category column, as I'm doing now. And the aim is to group the videos into two categories, either Power BI or AI. Okay, so finally we'll add our video link column.
and finally we'll uncheck the enable load option for the three data source queries because we don't want them to be loaded into our main Power BI report. So now that we're done creating our fact and dimension tables in Power Query, let's close and apply and load all this data into our main Power BI report. So once our data has been loaded, we'll go over to the model view and we're going to create our data model applying the star schema. So now I'll go through and verify the relationships created automatically by Power BI, delete them if necessary and create new ones. Now that's done, let's create our measures to complete our semantic model. So the calculation of my measures are straightforward. I'm just using the sum, average and the count rows function. Um, I'll spend some time explaining the average watch time in minutes because I'm using variables here. So I'll just quickly go through and create my measures and then just come back to the average watch time to explain how that's done. So now I'll go through and create the first measure for the fact views table. This will basically be the same process that I'll go through to create the measures in the fact video stats and the lookup uh, total tables. So I won't show you guys that to speed up uh, the process. You'll see also that I'll hide certain columns from the fact tables. Uh, this is necessary as I don't need these columns to be visible in the report view. So now all my basic measures have been created. I'd like to bring your focus to this measure here, the total subscribers who didn't watch the videos, uh, specifically to the fact that you can reuse these measures. As you can see, the total number of subscribers and the total number of subscribers who watch the videos are two measures that have already been created. So that's the feature of Power BI that I really like. So once you create your base measures, you are able to reuse these measures. And our final measure to wrap things up is the average watch time in minutes. Well, I'm using variables in this measure. You declare a variable with the keyword var, V-A-R, followed by the variable name. So if you have a measure that involves several calculation steps, consider the use of variables. So once you complete the calculation, use the keyword return to return the final result of your calculation. So there you go, that completes the semantic model for the YouTube analytics dashboard. Stay tuned because in the next video, part two, I'll be creating a beautiful dashboard based off from this semantic model. So thank you all so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you all in the next one.